Today on Culture Diaries, we are here at the White Space in Kui, and our guest today is a director, a theatre director. He's also an actor and was once a dancer. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Kenneth the Moore, to the program. Which do you identify with first now? Mm. Is it director or actor? You can't separate the two, Sha. Okay. Uh, um, I'll say director first okay. and then actor. So um, a lot of people mm. who are actors, um, when it comes to acting, you are, you are the star of the show. Yes. You are the one in the limelight. Mm -hmm. People dabble in directing, but that limelight, limelight can be very addictive. Mm -hmm. And you have sort of, you took a long break from acting mm -hmm. and you were fully behind the scenes. How are you able to sort of give that up, give that limelight up and say, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to let other people shine? Mm. I, I understand the temptation of wanting to be in front of, of, of the audience every time. Um, um, nothing beats that feeling as an actor if yeah. you're on stage and you're getting some, some kind of vibe from the, the energy from the audience, the energy from your fellow actors on stage. But um, I've been in plays. Um, when I started, I, I, I've been in plays where I see, I've seen things differently from what I've, yeah. I've, I've been directed to do. And I, I just thought to myself that, if I, if I can do this thing better, why not just go ahead and do it? I see things in pictures, and I've seen things from um, some kind of, some words, I've seen five different ways to say them. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I, I better just stay at the back and, and, and do this thing properly and yeah. see how it's done properly and push other actors to, to stay there. Um, secondly, it's not so bad because I'm actually a very shy person. <laughs> and really? Yes. I hear this from a lot of performers. I, mean, mm. I, don't, I don't understand. No, it's, it's the truth. It's the yeah. truth. Um, being shy, what, 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 what we do when we get on stage is to wear this persona, mask, yeah. this mask of a totally different person. When yeah. I get off, I'm, I'm a different yeah. person. Yes, You're I go back to my speaking. normal self. So having actors on stage was um, painfully so. Yeah, having to take the side burner, yeah. go back uh, behind the scenes for that. But um, it, worked, it worked well because I've also learned certain things from other actors that I've seen grow in the industry right today. Um, I know that I am acting is some kind of um, a communication or some agreement between the director and the actor. Yeah. Putting all those things into consideration, I, um, we're working at it. Okay. We're working at it. Yeah. Um, I know that um, also a lot of, um, when people move from that role of actor to director, I, I hear that there's a there's a cer certain difference because you are used to performance yourself, so mm. it's almost like you're you're d directing from an actor's perspective. perspective. What is I mean, has that worked for? Has that influenced you in any way in your style of directing? Yes, and I, I'd like I'd also like to add that um, I have another advantage. Mm. Um, because I started as a dancer yeah. and, and a choreographer. So, so movements. Movements, yes. Mm. I see actors, I see lines, I see movements, yeah. I see patterns, yeah. I see pictures. And I, I, when I hear words sometimes, I, I think of um, ways that the body can actually interpret yeah. instead of saying those words. So expressions, for instance. Mm. And so I, I've looked for every possible, uh, possible means to uh, explain something without talking about it. Words, yeah. And those things come together in my style of direct. So you also uh, moved from stage acting to screen acting. And <laughs> there's this interesting thing about performance, especially on stage, where with, with stage you have to sort of become bigger. Yes, larger, larger yeah, than have, life expressions, become, yes. Yes, you become mm -hmm. larger. Mm -hmm. And then on screen, a lot of the time you have to shrink. And I, I, find, I find that sometimes I watch some performers who are, who are typically stage actors, and when they come on screen, mm. they're either too big on the screen or they shrink so much that they disappear. Mm. Did you have any difficulty in, in that transition? Um, not at all. Um, I, I, I think that with my training and experience, experience in the field, um, I, I know that acting for stage and acting for film is slightly different, not totally different. Mm, okay. Yes, I, I, I hate it when, or I dislike it when directors say, tone down, you're not on stage, mm. this is the screen. I've, I've seen movies abroad and the actors are larger than life. Yeah. Because some, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, um, it's the medium of expression, how you okay. 
choose to, to play the character that counts. Mm -hmm. How the director brings all the actors, all the elements together that counts. Yeah. Um, acting for stage, you, you need the right voice, you need the uh, larger than life expressions and all that. And then for screen, when I, when I uh, got the call from a friend to come and do a short film for him. That's Down and Out. Down and Out, yes. Yeah. I just thought, yeah. okay, uh, this is brilliant. Let me go and see what's, what's in it for, for me. Um, on, on the set, it was, it was um, effortless because I thought oh, this, maybe it was a, it's a result of working with Udoka, who's okay. a talented director, for instance. Yeah. Um, he didn't give any issues as to, no, tone it down and all that. He just explained the character to me. Yeah. So I also think it's totally dependent on the actor as well, okay. on finding out the basic elements you should bring to the character, the characterization, the, the way the person or manner, the way the person speaks, um, gestures and all that. Um, so all those things should come into play when you're doing for stage and when you're doing for screen. Let's talk about Saru. Hmm. Um, you directed Saru in the musical one and two. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a huge success. Yes. What, what is what's that experience? And it, it's a very huge cast as well. Very so big. You're, you're dealing with you're dealing with directing music performance and there's so much there's happening. Movement, everything. Everything combined. Combined. There's a band mm -hmm. as well. Were you ever overwhelmed, or did you ever have any moment where you just thought, I, I can't do this? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say no. Yeah. Um, it, it goes back to the experience as a dancer. Okay. We've we've done shows where you have. You had 80 to 100 people on stage at the okay. same time, and you're required to, you know, blend. I've done choreography for 60, 70 people before, and you have to form patterns on stage, patterns that will make sense, patterns that will explain or uh, interpret what you're trying to, to portray to the audience. So having a cast, like a 100-man cast, for instance, um, we, had, we, had, we had to deal with, I had to deal with um, the technical people, for instance. Yeah. They were larger. There were like 40 of them. We had um, um, actors who were all coming together for the first time. Some of them didn't know each other before, so you had to manage, ego, manage egos, manage emotions, and all that. We had um, a band of 16 people. There was a music director, of course, but um, I was responsible for bringing all the elements together for the play as artistic director okay. for the play. Um, we, we had a, music, a, a dance director as well, and they were dancers. Yeah. Now. Um, on set, sometimes we've, we've seen, I, I've seen situations where there's a disconnect between actors and dancers and musicians because um, they, they think that, okay, we're, we're from, we're different genres, so you just Everybody's stay on your, your and do your own thing. But that didn't happen on this set with me because I, I, um, it, was a, it was a fluid experience in terms of managing these guys. I had some kind of understanding, on, on a spoken code in quote with yeah. them and because I understood where they were coming from as a dancer I could relate with them and as an actor I could also relate with the other guys and bringing them together was not, not such a big deal. We had three months of rehearsals for the first, first one, the first Saro the Musical, three months of rehearsals, we had workshops in between, we had, um, there were times when we had, when we had to do um, previews. And we had to walk to do those previews just to make sure that we got um, we, we beat those deadlines. So during that first one, we had some challenges here and there. But for the second one, we had to go back to the drawing board, do some kind of scripting. We uh, moved the cast around, and we did a, a fantastic show. What was your experience like going to the Edinburgh Fringe? Hmm. Which is one of, the, it's one of the biggest theatre festivals in the world. One of the, the, or is the biggest? I dare say the biggest. The biggest theatre festival in the world. <laughs> um, it, it takes place in the whole community, like yeah. a big city, mm -hmm. and, and everybody's involved. Every, it's, there are plays everywhere. Every street corner you enter, there's a play happening. Yeah. It, it opened my mind to, mm. to the, the, the biggest of all potential that our theatre here has in, in terms of quality, in terms of um, viability in terms yeah. of um, um, profit making, in terms okay. of uh, anything you can think of. Now, the, uh, the other challenge would be that we didn't have enough theatres like they have okay. over there. But I also found out that they were doing theatre in non-conventional spaces. That was the beauty of the festival. They were doing theatre in places that 
you could never have imagined. In a bar, for instance, there was theater there. They were, they were doing theater on the streets. Mm -hmm. And people were paying to see shows on the streets. Yeah. I've never seen that happen before. The kind of theater we do here is theater for development that we do on the streets. Mm -hmm. And those are for awareness, for campaigns, for... You don't get... They don't to do an NGO. Yes, yeah, an NGO. Yeah. Or the national orientation agency is trying mm -hmm. to pass this process and then they commission people... Like HIV on. messages. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was surprised that people were actually paying to... So that opened my mind to the commercial side and the business side of this profession that we haven't even tapped into at all. But then does it bother you and does it worry you that we as, as a people aren't paying for art yet? Because it seems as though for most productions to really blossom or to happen, you need some kind of corporate sponsorship mm. or some kind of investment from somewhere. But you can't say, I'm putting a show together and people are going to pay for tickets and I'm going to make my money back. Does that worry you? Because there is, it means there's no sustainability. Um, it, it does. It keeps me awake at night. <laughs> um, mm, but um, not paying for, for art is, 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 is a shame because I think that uh, our day-to-day -day lives as Africans, for instance, it, there's theater, you know, mm -hmm. speaking in a way of everything we do. Yeah. It's been there all the while. Now that it's, it's in our... Well, reality as a profession, we don't we don't see it as something that we can pay for. Um, people paying for art, uh, I think we still need a lot of orientation to do. Uh, we have a lot of a, lo a long way to go in terms of, of that. So people have been complaining. See, a lot of theatre goers, especially mm -hmm. in Lagos here, mm -hmm. complain. Um, they're still seeing the same plays being repeated over and over again. If it's not an Olaroti play or a Bolishenka play. Um, maybe now a professor at Media Rima play as mm. well. Um, but I know that you recently did um, London Life Lagos Living, Living um, which was adapted from Abou Mataya's um, book. book. And, and that drew a very, a very large audience, very interesting group of younger people mm -hmm. as well. So do you feel that we need more contemporary work? And why are we not seeing more contemporary work? Some people are just partial to certain things. I, I can love the Wally Schenker work and then decide that it's Wally Schenker's work I want to see. Mm. There, there's a problem with the education of the, the contemporary ones mm. and the older guys. Yeah. In language, for instance. Okay. The structure of the dialogue, it's mm. different. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. different. Yeah. So some people want more engaging conversations to happen mm. in a play when they come to see a play. Yeah. As opposed to, this As opposed very to just long monologues. monologues mm. that just go on and on. But what we have done now in trying to bridge that gap yeah. is to adapt some of these old plays. We, you can see a Wally Schenker play, for instance, and okay. we can adapt it in a more contemporary way so that it suits even the new um, guys who yeah. want to see theatre. Now, I'd like to state that mm -hmm. a theatre goer is not a hard sell at all. Okay. Anybody who has come out to see theatre mm. hmm? yeah. has made a conscious effort to be there okay. because I want to come and see this play. Okay. You know, so it's not um, rocket science, for instance, that, mm. okay, you want to see a play and then, no, oh, why are you sure? You find that a lot of people who complain have only seen one play. Doing contemporary works, we're still complaining that we don't have script writers. Yeah. It has to do with the work. Okay. The work is not solid enough. There's no point doing a contemporary work just because we want to do a contemporary work. Well, but why don't people commission work? Why don't people commission contemporary um, writers? Writers, too. why don't why why isn't there the chance for for searching for those contemporary stories? And maybe workshopping them as well. Um, or is it that it's just easy to just get something that's already been made? No, 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 no. The thing is, I I I I don't think it's about commissioning works. Okay. We don't have funding for that, first of all. Let me okay. just put that out there <laughs> <laughs> to commission any work. Okay. No money. <laughs> so there's no, if you try to do that, you yeah. break your neck. So. Mm -hmm. Um, these older guys wrote, they, they, were, they, they were writers because they wanted to write, they had yeah, passion for writing. Yeah. So they would write works and 20 years down the line, people still want to do those works, mm -hmm. right? Now this new breed of writers are writers who write because of what's happening now, mm -hmm. what's happening now. Okay. And, um, and they also intend to make, they a, living intend to make a living from their from writing. writing yeah. So that kind of, that style of writing can be subjective. It, it's in, in terms of yeah, it, it can only capture a certain, a certain element of mm. what we actually want in the theatre okay. and not in totality. Mm. 
So we, we talked about um, go, going to the Edinburgh Fringe and that mm. experience of opening your mind, mind and seeing yeah. other kinds of work and people working on conventional spaces. Um, I know with the Lagos Theatre Festival, there was the play Make Me Waka, which was, again, exploring mm -hmm. that space, urban city. And I actually yeah. experienced that play in, 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 in uh, the yeah. Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah. yeah, I got lost. Oh, wow. It's, it's, the, the show is designed in such a way mm -hmm. that it's an audio tour, yeah. so you have these headphones, headphones in. in, and then someone is telling you how yeah. to go, and um, people you will meet, the experience mm. was amazing. Um, and I just, I thought, with my colleague from the British Council, I thought yeah. this would be something that we can replicate here, or yeah. you know, just bring, and that's how come we, we invited them over to be part of the Lagos State of Festival yeah. here. Um, the Lagos State of Festival is a site-specific theatre. Yeah. trying to um, encourage our producers here mm -hmm. and theater directors here to do plays in non-conventional spaces. Yeah. Now, we don't have spaces here, first of all. The traditional but, but, then, but, then, but then that, you know, maybe Waka works yeah. at Freedom Park, and I remember watching, and it worked, and a lot of people enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But why are we still sticking to the old formula? Why haven't we started using unconventional spaces as for theater? Now, doing plays in non-conventional spaces will require doing plays for a smaller group of people okay. as the audience. Mm. Now, if you've done publicity, you've done um, production budget, your, your cost is this high, and you're going to just present for maximum 30 people, yeah. and you go back to your books, and you, you, know, you know that you don't want to do that. That's why yeah. people are still not open to site-specific theater. The conventional spaces can hold 200 people, people for instance. Yeah. So a lot of, some people would so rather it's just... it's all about the, yeah, the, the, it's, the, the economic policy yes, the, yes, that's the first rule mm. right now. It's until we have, um, you know, proper structures in yeah. place where it's not so difficult to commission a project and you're not so burdened by that before you can delve into other art forms. So, so how do you keep doing what you're doing? What keeps me going is the fact that I know that I want to impact. Okay. Impact. And, and, and in, in this, in this, the, this, the only way I can do that is to continue what I'm doing so that okay. other people can see a reason to also continue to do it. The rewards may not be great right now, but the success that we've recorded so far mm -hmm. in our trying to contribute to this, in quotes, renaissance, of bringing it back, yeah. theater and all that, um, it's immeasurable and I like it. That's why we're still doing it. What play mm. do you wish you made or brought to life? That what you have play? seen? Yeah, what play? For Call of Girls. Okay. Mm. Your favorite living artist, whether it's a performer, whether it's mm. a director. Favorite living. Yeah, that's still alive. Mm. Who you love just, you know, watching. Whether they're on the screen, whether they're on the stage. There's this man, mm. Wally Macaulay. Okay. Uh, I think he's, he's a fantastic actor. Mm. It's, um, he beats me every time. Every time I look, I see him on stage. I, I just wonder how he does it. Mm. Effortless, yeah. Somebody you'd love to direct who you haven't worked with yet. Yeah. No, but young. Your favorite color and why? White. It's Why? obvious, I'm dark. <laughs> you just like the contrast. <laughs> when was the last time you cried and why? When I happened in on a conversation, a long time ago, okay. on a conversation between my parents about having to choose um, among, uh, between my brother and sister who they should pay YAG fees for. Wow. Mm, I think that was the last time I cried. The best advice you've been given? Don't be complacent. My, my wife, Brenda, Oh, what would be the soundtrack to your life? Soundtrack. Hmm. It's Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> if you were fruit, what fruit would you be and why? Mm, apple. Why? Um, because everybody can eat, will eat an apple. It's, I don't think anybody's an allergic to apple. Really? Mm. Um, do you think art can change the world? Art will change the world. In one word and mm. one word alone, mm. what is art? What does art mean to you? Life. Kenneth Ho, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you very on. much. Congrats. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. If you'd like to find out all the weird and wonderful things I get up to, feel free to follow me on my social media channels. And don't forget to check out my website to find out all the happenings in the world of art and culture. Until next time, remember art.